I don't think I've ever had a portrait of me, of just me. It's always been either the husband's in it or I'm the one taking the picture. So we are rolling right now. And I'm okay. going to let you guys do an interview and tell the story. Okay. I come from a family of eight second to the oldest child. I had a brother, and he was a year older than me. And it's supposed to go down the line like boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. Well, the last two was set of twins. And um, that's the way it went with the girl last. Don't rock. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's a habit. That's all right. <laughs> okay. Oh, it was pretty fun. Especially when we were all teenagers. Because then we got to go out and we lived on, uh, oh, let me see. It was Treat Road and by the Sky Drive-In. So there was a barn and we used to watch movies up in the hayloft. Had a speaker put all up there. Somebody done it before we moved in. And so we used to put the bales of hay and make it like a chair or a couch and then sit there and watch a movie. And mom and dad couldn't find out what we were doing until they happened to climb up in there. <laughs> then they started watching the movies with us. And um, we had a... I think a bull named John and um, he kept getting loose on us and dad says you got to remember you cannot name him at all because he's going to be butchered but we had to so he was called John and he'd play ball with us because he was on a rope and it got into the ball diamond so He'd chase the ball and try to run with it. And he could only get so far. <laughs> but one day when we come home from school, John had gotten loose. Ran all over Treat Road, back and forth from our place to the neighbors. And they called the cops on us. Cause you know, that you can't have with the traffic. And so dad went and had him butchered. That was a bad thing for us kids because we couldn't eat the food. Couldn't eat the meat whatsoever because we knew it was John. <laughs> Those were the good times. I think I was in about the ninth grade. Yeah, I was in the ninth grade when we lived there. And then after that, we moved to uh, Harold Street and Homemakers. And uh, that was more in the country like, but like a project area. If you ever been by Madison School, that's where that was. Because we could walk. We didn't have to ride the school bus or anything. But when we lived on Treat Road to back up a little bit, all the kids that come play ball with us lived on Gallagher Drive. And that was, one family was 10. So by the time the bus driver picked all those up on that street, and by the time they picked up the Miguel's, cause that was six, the Morgans was about 12 kids. And so with us eight kids, we filled up the bus. There was no other room to set. So when we moved on homemakers, well, we could just walk and walk home, which that made it nicer for us. The rest of the kids, um, let's see. Bob was still a, Bob was in the senior class. He's the oldest. And I was a junior then when we lived 
there. So, and the rest of the kids, I ain't quite sure. <laughs> I forget the grades they were all in back then. Let's see, my husband and I got married in 1966 on July 15th. And we were married, let's see, 39 years. He was in the Nate. He also, in between that time, he went to boot camp before we got married. And in the Navy, and he said that he wants to get married after he comes back from boot camp. So I did. We did. And it was a small wedding, but that was nice. And then two, what is it, a year later, I had my son and uh, daughter. Two years later, had a daughter. And, uh, well, anyway, he was in the back track. He was in the Navy four years. Not quite four. They had an early out. He took it. He didn't want to stay there any longer. And he was in Vietnam for two tours of duty. Because that one tour lasts six months, so he was gone a year. We were married 39 years before he passed away. I lived all that time, the whole time, in Adrian. The only time we ever left was the two years that, uh, his last two years in the Navy when he got home from Vietnam, we lived in Virginia Beach. And that's where I had my, our daughter was down there. I lived on Broad Street in Adrian, on the corner of Broad Bristol, and my kids went to school up at McKinley. And up and I think they went there, I think at the time it only goes to fifth grade. And then the sixth grade, they got to go to Springbrook. So that took them and then they went to Adrian High and then my son graduated there, but when my daughter got into the senior, about her senior year, she was 18 then. And she decided she wanted to leave. So she said we had too many rules and she left and went up north to live at Vanderbilt. And that's about eight miles from Gaylord. She went up there and I said, you know, you're on your own. I said, uh, we'll help you out what we can, but you're gonna have to work and make a living. Why? I said, we ain't gonna be there. You want to leave? Try it on your own. You know you can always come back. So she wanted to leave. She had her heart set on going up there. So we let her and she graduated. And be oh, back it up. Before graduation, she made prom queen. She was on the honor roll. And there was only, what? 29 kids that graduated from that senior class because it was a brand new school up in Vanderbilt. And uh, she made prom queen. So I was very proud of my daughter because it was something she thought she had to do to get her way to do it. And Adrian High School is not geared up for what she wanted. So When my kids left, it was just my husband and I. Nice, quiet, oh, yes. 
very nice. And he worked a lot up until, oh, I'm thinking, he almost had 25 years in the UARCO. And that's when UARCO got bought out from uh, China, Japan, somebody from Japan bought the company. And when they did that, then everything, they changed everything. And uh, they didn't need some of the people, so they had to let them go. And he was one they let go. So, and then after that, he didn't have a job. He tried different places, but they tell you, you know, you're overqualified, but you're not. It's just a way of telling you you're too old. <laughs> I'm living back with my two brothers. First, it was just the one, which was David. And he begged me to come back. So he offered me this place and I took it. Now, Gary has lost his wife. So now I have the both the brothers on the hill. Uh, it's been kind of rough going, I think, for the two brothers. But I try to help them, but, you know, sometimes I don't want to listen to big sister. <laughs> I have gotten into a project and helping my brother in his man cave. I've worked so hard down there that sometimes he'll say, well, I don't know if we'll allow girls in the man cave. Well, he had to kind of bend his rule. So he does let me go down there and enjoy the man cave. We have parties, we have family gatherings with friends on Sundays. So we have a lot of fun together, which is nice for a change. I go out with the boys on Mondays and Tuesdays, sometimes Thursday if I can talk them into going out for steak night. And those three nights, I look forward to it so much that when they don't want to go, I kind of say, come on, let's go. Make you feel better. <laughs> so it's nice having them around because then they get to drive big sister around. I have other things I do. I have a hobby of either sewing. I love to crochet, but my main hobby is puzzles. I love doing puzzles, especially Thomas Kincaid. I can't afford his paintings, but his puzzles I can. <laughs> One year when my niece got married, Shelby, when she got married, we all went to Gatlinburg, Tennessee. And my sister-in-law then was still alive, that's Dave's wife. We went down to, well, anyway, stayed in the motel. And I didn't want to leave to go walk in town that day. Well, Val come knocking on my door and she goes, got to see this. See what? Well, she said, you got to take a little walk with me. I said, okay. So I walked with her and David, and she, there's this little alley, I call it an alley, between buildings, and she found the Thomas Kincaid cottage. Looked just like the one in his paintings and everything. So. She said, go in and enjoy. So I walked in there and all the paintings he had, at the time I'd done puzzles. 
And so everyone I could say, yeah, I did that puzzle, this puzzle and everything. And I met his brother, Thomas Kincaid's brother. Because he heard me talking to Belle at the time. And he goes, uh, you have any of his paintings? I said, no, I have his puzzles and I enjoy doing them and laminating them and do picture frames. I make my own frames. And uh, he goes, oh, then would you like this calendar? I said, oh, yeah, why? He said, it's got something in it. When you get home, you'll see. He gave me the bag. It had Thomas Kincaid bag and it had the calendar. And to this day, I've got the letter that he wrote with his name on it and everything. And I got the bag and I got the calendar. And to this day, it's never taken out of the bag. So someday it'll be worth a lot of money. <laughs>